right. All right. So, da -da 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 so you want to run a hackathon? Well, here to help. I'm Claire, and this is Neil. We're both organizers of the hackathon called Angel Hacks. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, oh, I see you, Lily. Hi. I think Lily has heard of Angel Hacks because they were there. So, um, right. So, I'm Claire. I was a lead at Angel Hacks, and I was also helped organize a few other hackathons. I'm a huge science neuro CS nerd, and I pretend to like philosophy to make funny Baudrillard references. Yeah, that I get because I actually like philosophy. <laughs> okay. So, um, my name is Neil. If you didn't notice or my thingy thing already, but like I've also organized hackathons and like Angel Hacks. I was a co-organizer. I host my local DV Hacks in person, and then Code Days Bay Area. That's always fun to do. I really like cookies. I like just made cookies, so I'm really excited to get them out of the oven. <gasps> Similar crummy stuff. Thank you. Yes. Good. Okay. That's great. Um, I like Otis Fokomara cookies. I had those yesterday. <laughs> awesome. Anyways, so before we get into it, what are some of the best events that you guys ever been to? So this this can be anything from a corporate event, from like maybe a high school dance, which I've had some wonderful experiences at, um, <laughs> which Neil might not relate to. Um, like, what are some events that you really, really like? And what kind of made them wonderful? Why did you like them? Hack the North is amazing. I love Hack the North. I loved it, yeah, yeah. And I think like it was really cool because like you could meet so such many cool people. They have very pretty website. Yeah. <laughs> so like, why would you say like code day? Oh, and that you guys, you want to sell it and have? Oh my gosh, I've, so, I've seen Imagine Dragons at a concert once. Damn, Shubham, Shubham's contact code day, of course, of course, Shubham. Of course. Rep code day, we like that. <laughs> Was it? Yeah, because they were like not they were like non-tech. Oh. Yeah, non-tech is a really big thing for organizing different types of things. You don't always have to be like constant like CS, CS, CS. Ew. Having I'm fun. The CS tech bro. Yeah, you don't need to be a tech bro to do stuff. Like you can oh, I remember there was this one really cool thing that was really big with like MLH hackathons before uh the pandemic. It was like cup stacking. It was like the most non-tech thing you can do. But it was just such a big thing. And they used to have like cup stacking, bro. How fast can you do cup stacking? How fast can you do it back? It's, it's Yeah, uh, cup stacking is awesome. I love it. Yeah. All right, awesome. So thank you for all these submissions. These are all just really great events. And I think a lot of people were to kind of say what they liked about it. Um, because I think one thing people said was non-tech elements and human elements, which thank you for pointing that out because I agree. Awesome. All right. So before I get into it, this is a really interesting quote that I think is useful to kind of point out. Yeah, why don't you read a portion of it? All right, cool. So hackathons are basically time-bound events where participants write computer code, build apps, and have become a popular means of socializing tech students and workers to provide innovative, despite little promise of material reward. Okay. Cool. That's a little bit more dramatic than I like to think, but it's an interesting view on how academics and other people in the grand scheme of things see hackathons. And kind of what really makes a hackathon important. And the really biggest thing you see here is socializing tech students to pr produce something that is important to them. Alternatively, as Jackie Jow, the legend, once said, hackathons are often crucibles of intense and focused learning, making, problem solving, community building, and play. So how do you even run a hackathon like that? It sounds pretty crazy. Another thing that someone has uh, said about tech culture is that there's almost an identity built around making things, of so being a maker that pervades technology culture. There's like this widespread idea of people who make things are simply different than those who don't. I don't know if I agree with the sentiment exactly, but it does give us a really important view on what really we should focus on in an event. And it's like you should treat your attendees as human beings. This seems really obvious, but stop thinking of an event as something that's just for coding, as Neil like said, but something more. And yeah, exactly. Like you like this mentality is pain or hurtful. And if it's something that you perpetuate into a hackathon can make it somewhat of a less fun hackathon. So the goal here is to get people to feel like they belong. They belong in a community. They belong in a place where people love to create, love to learn. But it doesn't have to necessarily mean making. All right, now that all these dramatics are aside, what is a hackathon? So what do you all think a hackathon is? I mean, I feel like if you're here, you would know a little bit about what a hackathon is already. But just like going over for the people that don't, next slide, I think it explains it pretty well. So just 
getting some definitions out there. Hacking. It's not actually getting to NSA, killing um the the servers of the server room. I don't know. So hacking can actually be creative problem solving, making, doing fun stuff. Anything is like where you make something together is hacking. And you try and redefine it. Yeah, hacking NSA with HTML, it can definitely mean pen testing. But also trying to rebrand it as like a hackathon is where you make some cool hacks, something you put together that's maybe a little rough, but it does something cool. And hackathons are 12 to 40 hour long events where people come together for workshops, fun events, to code, to eat food, and to present their work. Yum. You can eat food, for, for sure. But then there's also like prizes involved. It's basically where people come together to hack and to just enjoy the ritual of hacking. <laughs> and then <laughs> attendees, if y'all don't know what attendees are, y'all are basically attendees. <laughs> we have we have all control you guys and you guys are in our little Ponzi scheme. You guys are our, our attendees now. Yeah. All right, yes. Mer merchant stickers are things that we'll get to. Yeah. So then, all right, now on to some, what is who? Your organizing team is extremely important. For example, our Angel Hacks team was a team of friends and some of us have already worked on projects before together. And um, it doesn't even have to be people from the same school. We had members across the country and in this like tiny little area of the US known as the East Coast. Or they don't even have to be in the same region. So um, this organizing team is a team that you have to love working with. Even when it's 2 a.m. the night before the event and nerves are high and nothing is gonna work out and everything's gonna fall. That's when you, that is, that is the crux of when you have how much you guys love each other. Second of all is your target audience. What are you trying to accomplish? Everything revolves around this, your mission, your goal, everything. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but yes, the target audience is, audience is very important. <laughs> yes, the hackathon is a friend we made along the way. This is a joke that um, Neil had like written down in forehead. So I can't <laughs> believe you stole it. That's, that's really not nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get into specifics of running a hackathon, another thing you should know is the mission. And not to sound all James Bondy, it is of the utmost importance to know what you're trying to accomplish. And it's not just the, and it's this is something like understanding the direct outcome of your event. It's trying to know like what your event is going to be a part of. For example, for Angel Hacks, we focused on these young coders in LA who haven't really had a space. We want to get them to love CS before they're put into this soul crushing class that is APCS <laughs> and tell them that there's more to coding than just handwriting Java code. This story is really important to tell people, to tell sponsors, to tell future attendees, teachers, everyone, because this is how you attract people. When you interact with a hackathon, you're buying into their genuine story. And that's another thing. You should make sure that your story is genuine. It's something you actually care about. Because that also makes it a lot easier on you to talk about and advocate for. Yeah, and this story is very important because that's how you actually rope people in. And then it should be impactful to some degree, but like, okay, you should overstate your story a bit too much. You don't have to say like, your story doesn't have to be like, oh, we're saving the world one um, country at a time. Oh, we're <laughs> food scarcity in, we're, we're gonna increase corn production. Actually, that might be a good thing, but like you should isolate- Corn production specifically? That's a little problematic of you. Anyways. Yeah. I love corn. Like the thing is that you, once you isolate your story to like a small amount, like for example, angel hacks, the way you do this is like you isolate something that you're interested in. For example, LA, it's under, for angel hacks, it was like underrepresented students are systematically discouraged. And like, it's a hackathon for beginners. People who are, don't have this type of like CS education that actually teaches you how to make before like APCS and all of this. And then you should keep this type of branding and keep telling this story throughout your, events that you give out in your website, in your even in your logo, if you can try and incorporate this type of story, you'll get more people to join, more people interested. Yeah, for example, Angel Hacks was one of the few hackathons that had middle schoolers as attendees. I think that was really great for a lot of people to realize that you can start early. You don't have to start in high school. Yeah. Um, this is another hackathon that you might have also heard of called Windy City Hacks, uh, which kind of inspired me a lot as when I was um, first getting into Hack Club, which is you know, the story and the branding and the amazingness of the events. They set a new precedent for what making looks like for Chicago youth. And they generally accomplish that. And I think branding is also important to be consistent with your story. Like the whole idea of a design, color thing, wording, everything. If you keep it consistent, it makes people remember you. So you might notice how Angel Hacks has had a consistent design for a very long time. This telltale yellow, yeah. And yes, 2019 was a fat minute ago. I agree. Yeah, it was crazy. 
And then also for just adding on to that, just like your story, for example, for Windy City, it was like a pretty big story. It was like like creating Chicago's biggest high school hackathon. It's like you can have big stories and even having them be a little premature is okay as long as you make sure to achieve those types of stories and bring it into reality. Yeah, don't don't reach too high, but also be realistic, but also kind of like see what inspires you and see what inspires other people. So now you might ask, when and where? An event has these th things, because if you want to go somewhere, you have to go there, you have to know when. And I know it's really hard to pick a date. There's always going to be something that's going on. Maybe there's another test, the, you know, the SAT at the same weekend. Or maybe it's finals week for your for people attending. Maybe um, there's a huge event at your like in a region who other people might want to go to. It, there's always something going on. So it's important to put your foot down and choose a date. Or you could choose two weekends. You could be flexible, but it's important to have a time range to know what's realistic for you. And also, you actually kind of have to tell people when the event is because they need to know that they're free or else it's a little bit hard for people to actually show up. I don't know, hot take. Second of all, you need a venue. A venue is a lot harder because that requires funds and a concrete idea of your event and how many people are going to show up. So what this means is that this could come a little later, but it's something that's very important. We'll talk a little bit more about venues. So then to do this, you want to actually like get these people roped in and interested about what you're doing. So then to do this, you might not know exactly your venue. You don't, you might not know the sponsors very well. So then that's where cold emails come into effect. It's when you know a lot about them, but they don't know a lot about you. And you're just sending an email, introducing yourself, telling about the event and asking them basically, yo, can you give me some money? Or like, could you give me something, please? <laughs> so don't, don't sound desperate. Just yeah. like they, you know, don't sound deficit. That, that was an exaggerated version. But we'll, we'll show you exactly like how to do it. But then the main thing here is be confident when you're sending these types of things. Like you, it's, you shouldn't just like see, okay, Google, that's like way too big of a company for me to ever ask. Oh, Replit. Oh, that's such a big company. I shouldn't even like approach them. You should like be confident, shoot your shot, send all these, send a bunch of emails, even if like a few of them don't go through, like a majority of them, if I'm being honest, won't go through, they won't, won't reply. A lot of them will reject you. But then the thing is, if you keep doing it, that 1% that actually accepts and gives you money will build up and you'll actually have like a good amount of money to do your hackathon with. And the way you want to, yeah. So reach out to content. Replay is a great place to actually ask for sponsorships. They love, yes. they love teaching. Replay yeah. has sponsored Ava Hacks for two years. All right. And another few things to keep in mind is make sure that you don't, you're not using a template. It's good to have a template in your mind, but every company is different and people you want to reach out to, they're giving you money. So you should put an effort into telling them a story about yourself to talk about how coding has changed your life, how something has impacted you. Um, hey, maybe even Replicon inspired you to run a hackathon. Something like that can tell them that this is a human that's running it. It's a human that cares. And this will make them genuinely want to help. Another thing is small businesses in your area should never be overlooked. They could be the best resources out there. Reach out to those small co companies. And if, even if they don't give you financial support, they might help cater or print t-shirts or create something that makes your event a lot better at a decrease or a free price. For example, Angel Hacks, I, we keep talking about Angel Hacks, but Angel Hacks had, um, we, we got in the local area to print our t-shirts at a much easier, cheaper price for us. So it's really important. And yeah, another big thing is that, yes, you're, in, you're going to be a nonprofit and we'll talk about how to get nonprofit status. But if you're a nonprofit, companies do get um, tax deductions, which is a huge incentive. Yeah, definitely. And then also when you're sending these emails, you're a high schooler, right? Or if you're a high schooler, try and like use that to your advantage. Be aspirational. People love when you're like doing these types of things and you don't have a plan. Even if you don't have a plan, you can say like, I'll get to it. I'll do these types of things. Being like a high schooler who wants to do things and it's very good, it's like a very good persona for you to take on. And then for specifically for sponsorships, there are two types of main sponsorships, in-kind and monetary sponsorships. In-kind can be anything from just like stickers to like a, a box of just like swag, anything. <laughs> You've got a pencils from Desmos or like yeah. mug coasters. I, I don't know really know what these people are on, but yeah. Yeah, for DB Hacks, we just got like a big box of Nintendo Switch games. It was great. Like anything can be... Um, Anything can be an in-kind donation. Like, it's really fun. And then monetary, of course, it's just like money related. We want, you want that cold hard cash to maybe buy some snacks, to maybe buy the prizes, those types of things. And 
you want to lean more on monetary, but also in kind is a very good thing. You shouldn't like put those down because those are the types of things they'll send after the event or during the event, just like lay them around. Like who cute plushies? We like that. Exactly. Four by four by four Ruby. We had, we had plushies. We gave out plushies for people, for people. Yeah. And when you're contacting sponsors, there are a few types of sponsors you should like categorize and make sure you're contacting. You should be contacting food sponsors. You can't have a 12 hour, 24 hour or a 72 hour hackathon without food. You need snackos to actually like get people interested. You need people to like, oh, pizza, yum, right? <laughs> to get people to like interest in the hackathon. Then secondly, you can't have a hackathon without a place to do the hackathon. Like this is one of the most important, <laughs> this is one of the most important things to like actually have a hackathon. If you don't have a place, you don't have a hackathon. And then also workshops and judges are very important. These are the types of things you'd be like, oh, I think Replit might be able to provide maybe a workshop or like a judge, something that could actually like benefit the students. You might contact Vercel, they're very cool with workshops and other types of things. And then make sure, again, I can't stress this enough, you have a venue and you check up beforehand, you check up everything, because if you don't have a venue, you don't have the hackathon. Like I've had two hackathons, where, like the <laughs> venue is like kind of flaky where they're like, yo, actually, can we not? You need to like, stress that okay this is stable we're having this venue we're having this hackathon important make sure you oh, yeah, communicate right. with the venue that there if you there's students here if there's under 18 or anything safety measures make sure they have the liability waivers a lot of areas do want that um for example our, our snapchat venue uh at the last minute it needed like free liability waivers from everyone which is a huge scramble so if we communicated beforehand it'd be a lot better um and yes uh, no venue, no hackathon. This has happened to me personally as well before. Oops. Okay, and then, yeah, and prospectus. Oh, yeah, so then prospectus is basically what you can offer to the company. Like, okay, let's be honest. Y'all are high schoolers or you're just starting out with a hackathon, right? You might not have a lot you can give to these companies. First thing you should be doing is like, appeal to the altruistic side, right? You're a young student actually going towards them, right? You have a good story, first of all. And if they buy into your story, they'll give you something. And one of the biggest things is, oh, yes, the retro bank logo. I specifically searched up the retro one. I really like that one. I, and then you can, like, offer a few things, like workshops. Workshops, some companies may like because, okay, you can teach them a little bit about their product. It's mutually beneficial because, like, this, your um, attendees learn a little bit. They And they actually end up using these possibly products outside the hackathon. Judging, that's kind of, like, not as great of a thing. But still, they can provide judges that might be good for them. Marketing material and swag prizes. All of these are, like, amazing because, like, bro, you get swag. You get, like, cups. You get money not money you get uh video games from them it's like amazing they get to do their products i yeah mom i love mom. okay then um tax deductions tax deductions are one of the biggest things over here so hack club bank you should definitely sign up onto hack club bank if like hack club.com slash bank yep the link is in the chat if you are doing a hackathon or thinking about that that's where you should start just like start creating like this it's a great place to actually start a bank account act like an adult, do all these different types of things, and you get this 501c3 status. And that's very important because then you get tax deductions. So they're incentivized to give you money because if they give you money, they can put it on the tax report and have less taxes. So then they actually save a little bit of money in the long run. So like, it's very cool. And that is a very big incentive for like a monetary donation. There's also one of wonderful great examples of Prospecti online. So you can just check it out. Um, you could just, we, I, there's probably resources that we could set out afterwards, but there's some great examples. But a really big thing is just have a lot on what sponsors are putting their money into and some ways that you care about these companies. All right. So now, now that we have all this event, this event is great. We have everything going for us, but we don't really have people signed up. And like we said, the point of a hackathon is for the people. The marketing is big. Marketing is tedious. Unfortunate. But it does pay off. So one of the first things you do is, Email every school in your area. This sounds painful, but it's wonderful, okay? You sit at night, it's 12 a.m., you're just typing in emails every day. So what you do is you can scrape or you can manually look for schools with science CS, science teachers, principals, and heads of departments, and send them an email telling about how amazing of a service they'll be doing for their students by sharing this wonderful event. And here's a tip. Schedule some of the emails to be arrived at like 7.50 a.m., because that's when most teachers are checking their email before class starts. And this is before class starts, so they'll remember to tell them the day of. 
something that's worked for us really well. Second of all, you should advertise, oh, Neil disappeared. You should advertise on hackathons at hackathons at hackweb.com. A lot of people reference that. There's also dev posts. Those two are really wonderful places with huge um, audience um, where people can check out. And email and message local newspapers, nonprofit organizations, or student organizations, and build up your SEO. So add, if you edit some of the meta tags on your website and there's tutorials online, you can add yourself onto a Google events. So even people who are not actively looking for hackathons might be able to figure out and see your event, which is really great. So this is kind of how um, we were able to get almost like a thousand attendees for Angel Hacks 2.0. So now we have all this and now, oh, your school starts at seven. So yeah, obviously um, when I say 750, that's like kind of generalized. Um, something around that time works, maybe in your area it's a little bit different. Anyways, day of logistics. It's a day of, you birthed the baby, now what do you do? So you've made it. You've made it the day that people are starting to trickle in. One thing you should know is that you should plan on 40% of registered people actually being there um, but you should have about enough materials for 80% just in case. Yes, you might have a huge amount of signups, but most people won't actually come. Second of all, have an emergency money ready if something goes wrong, like Wi-Fi or first aid. Our venue was snapped at. We thought there'll be uh, Wi-Fi. There was no Wi-Fi. We had to run out to Best Buy to get a router. So there's a bajillion things that might go wrong that just are crazy to you. And finally, have a form of communications for every single mentor, judge, and fellow organizer so everyone knows what's going on. You won't lose someone. If you need someone to do something, you can very fast get to them. This is really vital, especially for an in-person event. And finally, have more than enough snacks. <laughs> Surprisingly, they're very popular. And people get the munchies a lot when they're toting. It's great. So yes, snacks are important. Snackles. <laughs> yeah, you're a snack. Anyways. All right, cool. And then, OK, and Revlet. Yay! Yeah, Revlet is like a huge part of these hackathons, right? When you have an in-person hackathon, yeah. Also, like Revlet, it's a it's a little-known company. Y'all might not know about it, right? It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's quite a down. down, down. No. So then, it's, very, it's really great for in-person hackathons because, like, for example, you might come have it at a school and you have a bunch of Chromebooks and you might not be able to actually spin up like C++ to teach them a little bit about like game dev. You might not be able to teach them Python for like introduction. So in Replit, it's really cool because you can get a bunch of Chromebooks, ask sponsors for Chromebooks, and then actually teach beginners through those Chromebooks with like Replit and other types of things. You can also teach a bunch of workshops. Um, we'll tell you where the recording is. I think later, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Oh yeah, but then you can try and teach workshops using Replit. You can go to workshops.hackclub.com and then there are, a lot of them use Replit and don't use like uh, teach workshops. They use Replit a lot. And then you can prepare templates beforehand. You can do like web development workshops, machine learning workshops, web three workshops. I don't know what those mean, but like those are really good workshops y'all could do. And y'all can just like spin up a Replit template, spin up something else, a cool workshop, and then teach it. And the possibilities are really endless for that. Also, as um, they said before, like Replit is great for sponsorship. They give a lot of swag, tips. They love to spread learning in general. Like, okay, they can like, hand out like lots of stickers. I they love Replit. Fire, they have some fire t-shirts too. Yeah. Oh, I, I think mine are too small now. Oh, oof. okay. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> All right. So, and we're done. Some takeaways is that you should join a hack of Slack. I know this is like a little bit of marketing, but hey, this is, what's it called again? Um, <laughs> marketing in action. Hack, you can just go to hacklub.com. Um, I can't recommend Hacklub big enough. There's the Meganar, which we could, uh, you could just Google it. And if you want to organize or any events, feel free to ask us anything. Our, con our contact info is below. And special thanks to Jessica, Tala, Hacklub, Jackie, Lachlan, and the rest of the Angel Hacks organizing team. Yeah. And we're free to answer questions for like the rest of like the five minutes. But like, yeah, <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> so, um, you guys can use the Q and A feature. Which... Oh yeah, definitely big, 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 big up on making our. That's like huge on sponsorship, huge on cold emailing. If you're ever like kind of confused about like, oh, who should I contact? How do I do this? The making our has it all. Making was a god. Yeah, uh, I I could see if I could find a link to the video, and I'll send it in the chat. Cool. Favorite part about running a hackathon? Um, huh. I really liked, I really enjoyed 
working with the students that was really fun it was also really cool to um bro just being in there like feeling the energy the and, like, vibe the vibe bro you actually get to like go into the hackathon and like talk to everyone do all these different types of things it's so fun like over there also the food you decide what foods there you get your favorite food it's amazing yeah. The next. Okay, I, I see your priorities. <laughs> yeah. My biggest priority is like food. I love food. Um. Yeah. So there's online hackathons as well, especially because of COVID. Um. You can also find them from either hackathons at hackclub.com or DevPost. And for a hackathon, how old you have to be? It depends, actually. For example, we allowed a lot of younger students, like middle schoolers and even a few elementary schoolers. But I think most hackathons are for like either students, like high school students, or people at a company. It depends. Yeah. Uh, Hack Club does uh, help hackathons for universities and colleges. Just like go to Hack Club Bank, they'd love to like do it for any type of thing. I think they also do it for like college level hackathons. They also use Hack Club Bank, so it's really yeah. cool. But they focus more on high schools. Just uh, by the way, since if you're Wait, in college, you you're an adult who can actually have a bank account. Uh, what time in high school would you consider the best time? I don't know. It just whenever you have time. I do want to point out. I currently am in the Both me and Neil are in eleventh grade. It is a very busy year. I recommend having the groundwork uh, ready before. Just yeah. so like you're not absolutely, you should be like ready for things. Yeah. And the school oh, library is a great place. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wait, and a big thing, is it free or do you have to pay? I think like a big thing for hackathons, we, I think we just took as a given, like you want to make it free. You want to make it like open to as many people as you want. That's why you're getting these types of sponsors. That's why you're getting all these different types of things. So making it free is like a huge big thing. Cause like you just go in and get some food, get some nice stuff. And for um, Eli's question about um, mentoring high schoolers, yeah, there's a lot of wonderful high school. I remember there was a local adult who helped mentor my um, middle school robotics club. And it was just one time every week. And it was really, really great. I think you could definitely reach out to clubs and parents in the area. Or you could look for if there's hackathons in your area and you could offer to mentor. For example, for Angel Hacks, we had a lot of people offer to mentor without us reaching out, which was really great and helped us out a lot too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hackathons, it depends on how long they are. You could have um, 12 hours, 40 hours, 72 hours. I think there's a limit to how long people want to like no, no, week-long hack week hackathons, yeah. Oh, that's a, little, that's a little much. And also, I mean, you know, it's also like a time hours. commitment thing. I love People are busy. I love 72-hour hackathons. It's actually the best. Oh, I'm at school right now, so I have to put on my mask. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then Jessica, uh, so the next hackathon we're running, I'm tech, I think I'm running DB Hacks next and then Angel Hacks. You should, y'all should. Angel Hacks 3.0, guys, check out. We haven't, we don't have anything, anything set up yet. So we don't have the marketing out. material set up yet, but we have, we, we have a plan and idea, I think. So we're planning on doing it sometime in summer. I think that's what we're shooting for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll be cool. So yeah, it lasts all night, meaning that sometimes people will live through it. So like, tr like stay overnight. So they might bring a sleeping bag or you have some accommodation or you could just have it be 12 hours or you can have people go home. All of these are possibilities. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we yeah, love it. It's right. definitely different for online hackathons because online hackathons means you could reach out to people not necessarily in your area. So it might be more work or it could be less work. You could post in a bunch of different online forums because anyone can really show up because it's going to be online. There's no like safety issue. And no COVID issue. <laughs> so um, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And then something really cool. I just like in-person hackathons are so much better. Like, honestly, if you're thinking of going like online or in-person, in-person is so much more rewarding because online you just sit at a computer. Like you, you don't interact with anyone. Cool crushing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's 2.59. I think we're going to get kicked out. So if you have any more questions, we have our contact info there. We can ask in the Hack Club Slack. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being awesome at, uh, attendees. No, but yeah. a hack, that's the whole point. A hackathon is that you interact with other people and it's not much sitting at a computer. Anyways, thank you very much. All right, cool. First, do, do, do we do bye. it? Right, bye. We did. Bye. Wait, I'll put the link in the chat for the slide. So like it stays there.